performance of the browser, even with Pandora running in the background. I see the conductor coming. Let me lock the phone and put it in my pocket for a second. Pandora keeps playing. And I can now control Pandora from the lock screen. Just a quick double tap on the home button, up pop the controls. Let me skip this song. I've heard that song somewhere before. <laughs> I can't remember the name of that artist, so let me go back to, to uh, Pandora. Oh yeah, Matt Costa. I like this song, let me buy it. I'll go buy it from iTunes. Notice that Pandora keeps playing. 25% of the 120 million hours that we stream every day are streamed over an iPhone. So we're already sending a ton of people to iTunes. Just imagine what will happen when this thing goes live. So I could spend my whole train ride like this. I could read my email, I could browse the web, I could catch up with my calendar, and all the while, my personal soundtrack just keeps spinning in the background, just like it was always meant to be. Thanks very much. Thanks, Tim. Pandora in the background is fantastic. Our next service is voice over IP. Now VoIP continues to grow in popularity, led by Skype. Skype already connects more than one out of every nine international phone calls made on the planet. It's amazing. And they have a great app for the iPhone. But the problem is, up until now, if you left the app, the phone call ended. And even worse, if you weren't running the app in the foreground, you couldn't receive Skype calls. But again, all that changes with iPhone OS 4. Now, when you're on Skype, you can switch to another app, and the phone call stays on. You see you get this double high status bar to show you're still on the phone call. And even when you're not running Skype in the foreground, when you lock the phone, you can still receive Skype calls. To give you a technology demo of how they can take advantage of multitasking on iPhone OS 4, I'd like to invite up Skype's head of iPhone product development, David Ponsford. David. Thanks, thanks, okay. thanks for inviting us here today. We're very excited to be here. I'm here with John Chang, our lead iPhone developer, who's going to help me demo the Skype app today. Skype enables the world's conversations, helping people make great quality free phone calls. In just six short years, we've amassed over half a billion registered users, touching almost every country on the planet. And now, with iPhone OS 4, it's even more convenient to use Skype. Let's show you how. This is the screen I see when I first go into Skype. I can see all my contacts, and I can see those that are online with a green icon next to their name. And of course, they can see that I'm online too. Now, until today, navigating away from the Skype app meant that I'd go offline. The app would quit, and I'd no longer be able to receive chats or calls from any of my contacts. However, with iPhone OS 4, when I leave the app, I go into background yet I'm still able to receive calls. Let's say I want to go to one of my favorite games. I just double click the home button, bring up the multitasking UI, and go straight to it. Now, even though I'm in a, another application, I still look online to my Skype contacts because the OS is maintaining a network connection between my iPhone and the Skype cloud. Oh look, Aaron's calling. Now, even in another app, if someone tries to call me, I receive a notification, and I can answer it with just one tap. Hey, Aaron, are you there? Hey, David, how's it going? Pretty good. Can you just hang on one second? Yeah, sure. Great. Now, the notification you just saw was really simple to implement. Just a few dozen lines of code, and we can play our own custom sound. Uh, by the way, we're piping the sound from this iPhone through the AV system here, kind of like a, a giant speakerphone. This is a, a real Skype call. Hey, Aaron, are you there? Yep, I am. Hey, I was wondering if you're interested in getting some dinner tonight. Yeah, sure. I'll just go into an app and uh, see if I can find some places. OK. OK, so you can see at the top of the screen, there's a red status bar. This shows that the Skype call is still in progress, even though the Skype app's no longer in foreground. I'm just looking up some places now, Aaron. Um, how about we go to Abacus? That sounds great. Actually, I always wanted to try that. Cool. OK, I'll send you the details in a few minutes. I'm just with some folks right now. OK, sounds good. I'll see you later. Great. Bye-bye. So Bye -bye. now I can choose to go to another application, or I can just put the phone in my pocket. In either case, the app will be in background, and I can still receive calls. Now, with iPhone OS 4, Skype is even more convenient and useful 
for everyone that depends on it every day worldwide. Thanks for having us here today. Thanks, David. So voice over IP working in the background on iPhone OS 4. The next service we have is background location. Now, there are two classes of applications that would like to use your location in the background. One are turn-by-turn -turn direction applications, like TomTom. Now, these applications want to continuously monitor your location using GPS, so they can always tell you when to take the next turn. The problem is, until now, if you left an app like TomTom, then it would stop tracking your location and stop giving you directions. But now with iPhone OS 4, you can be getting directions from TomTom Tom in your car, listening to your music right from your iPhone, and it's still in the background After giving you directions. After yards, turn right, then stay in the left lane. So it can continue to track your location continuously with GPS in the background. Now, GPS uses a fair bit of power, and something like TomTom Tom wants to use it all the time. And that's OK for an app like this, because it's generally used in the car when your iPhone is plugged in and charging. But there's another class of applications that also wants to use your location. But it isn't used when you're plugged in and charging. These are social networking applications, like Looped. And we came up with a great solution for these apps that doesn't require GPS to be on all the time. And for that, we use cell towers. Now, it turns out our baseband is always connected to a cell tower. It's the way that you receive phone calls. And it knows when you've moved from one cell tower to another. And if you've switched cell towers, we know you've moved location as well. So we're sitting there with this very low power, always listening to it. And we know you've moved locations, normally 500 to 1,000 meters to switch between cell towers. We can then wake up the application and tell it your new location, and then it can tell all of your friends. So that's background location. Now, for all these location things, we take privacy very, very seriously. Ever since we added the first APIs for location, we would put up a panel whenever an application wanted to use your location. And the user would have to approve this. We're taking privacy several steps further in iPhone OS 4. First, we're adding an indicator right on the status bar to let you know if any application is asking for your location, be it a foreground application or one of the background applications, so you can know if something's tracking your location. Next, we're adding fine-grained settings so you can see all the applications that would like to use your location. And the user can enable or disable location per application. And on top of all of this, if any application has asked for your location in the last 24 hours, we'll add an indicator right next to that app so you can know that it's asked for your location. So we're being completely transparent on the usage of location, and we're letting users set on an app-by-app -app basis the ability for apps to use location. And that is background location. Next. Push notifications. Now, we've had these for about nine months now. They're incredibly popular. They're great for things like scoring updates, uh, news alerts, people challenging, uh, challenging you to a game. So they're incredibly popular. In fact, in just nine months, we've pushed more than 10 billion notifications. Here's how it works. A third party sets up a server. They send their notification to Apple's push notification server and then we send it to the phone. And we can do this with very low power because we're always connected. We have a single connection uh, to the phone. And we'll coalesce multiple notifications from multiple sources through this one connection to the phone. So that's push notification. Now, building on push notification, we're adding a new service, which is local notifications. Local notifications are just like push notifications, except you don't need a server. It can all be done right on the phone. So for instance, let's say you have a TV guide application. And it wants to alert you, give you an alarm, when your favorite television show, The Colbert Report, is about to start. And it can do all of that with local notifications. 